Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life, part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the third most important part of a cell that is cytoplasm. So let us see what is cytoplasm. The name itself defines it. Cyto means cell and plasm means plasma, a fluid-like substance. So the fluid inside the cell enclosed by plasma membrane is known as cytoplasm. So this fluid fills the entire space which is there inside the cell. It is little viscous. However, it has almost 80% of water. Viscous is uh, the stickiness comes due to viscosity. For example, when you think of honey, honey has very high viscosity. That is why it is very thick and it is very sticky. So cytoplasm is also viscous, but it is not that viscous. 80% is water and remaining 20% accounts for its viscosity. It is also known as cytosol. Cytosol is another name for cytoplasm. So these two terms are often used interchangeably. So this entire fluid, the sky blue color fluid which you see, that is cytoplasm. Now, when we say cytosol, I basically, we basically talk about this fluid. But when I say cytoplasm, I am talking about everything that is inside the cell. That is the fluid-like substance containing the organelles. But when we talk about the cytoplasm minus the organelles, we are talking about the cytosol. So cytosol is basically the fluid-like material. And cytoplasm is fluid-like material plus the organelles embedded in it. Many cell organelles are embedded in the cytoplasm as you can clearly see from the uh, picture. When you talk about the composition of cytoplasm, it is made up of a fluid plus a lot of biomolecules are present in it. For example, amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, enzymes, vitamins, nucleic acids, all of them are there in this cytoplasm. So that is its composition. Talking about the significance, how is cytoplasm significant? It contains many dissolved nutrients which is necessary for the cell. Dissolves waste products, for example, all these organelles perform their specific function. Now when each of them perform their function, some of the waste materials are produced. Now where should they throw the waste material? So they throw the waste material outside in the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm dissolves the waste products. Organelles embedded in cytoplasm each performs a specific function without which the cell cannot function as a whole. Now it acts as a, a place where all the cell organelles can stay. It, it is something like this that let us suppose there is a company which has 10 employees. Now those 10 employees need a common workplace where they can come and work together. And what is that common workplace? That is the office. So here also cytoplasm acts as the office where all the cell organelles are present. They, each of them perform their function and if any of them doesn't perform their function, if mitochondria stops functioning, the cell will not be able to function correctly. Controls the shape of the cell because it forms the basic material, the base of the cell. So it also controls the shape. Helps in cellular respiration with the help of cytoplasmic inclusions. What are inclusions? They are non-soluble molecules floating in cytoplasm. For example, the fat bodies. So with their help, it also helps in cellular respiration. That is the process by which glucose is utilized to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy in the form of ATP molecules. So these are some of the important functions of cytoplasm because of which they are of high significance. Now when we talk about cytoplasm, it makes sense to discuss about cytoplasmic streaming. What is cytoplasmic streaming? Now this cytoplasm again is not static. There is some movement involved with the cytoplasm. So movement of cytoplasm within a cell. So it is not that the cytoplasm moves so the cell will also move. Cell will not move. Cell will remain at the same place but the cytoplasm inside will keep moving like a fluid. 
So this movement is called cytoplasmic streaming. It is also known as cyclosis. So cyclosis is another term for cytoplasmic streaming. So you can think of this example. Have you ever made a paper boat and put it in water? What happens? The boat starts moving. But do you think that the boat itself is moving? No, it is the water which is moving and since the water is moving, the boat is carried away with it. So similar is the case in case of cytoplasmic streaming. It is the fluid which is moving, the cytosol which is moving, not the organelles. But since the organelles are embedded in the cytoplasm, so when the fluid is moving, the organelles also appear to move. So the, it, it is, the scenario is the same as this paper boat. So functions of cytoplasmic streaming, it helps in transport of nutrients and metabolites. So when the fluid moves, it can transport materials, exchange of materials between cell organelles. Now when the fluid moves, it helps different cell organelles to interact with each other. For example, instead of one paper boat, if you have three, four paper boats, all of them are on water. Now since the water is moving, one boat might come near to another one again the third board might come near to the second one so they can interact amongst themselves so similarly here also one or the other cell organelle might interact with each other due to the motion of the cytoplasm so this is cytoplasmic streaming another thing about this is there are several factors which influence this cytoplasmic streaming it is not that every time the cytoplasm will flow in the same way there are many factors on which it is dependent and some of them are temperature inside the cell, the pH inside the cell, viscosity because if, if the liquid is very very viscous it will not flow that easily but if it is less viscous it will flow easily. It also depends on the hormones present and the presence of light of course. So these are some of the factors which together influence cyclosis. Another example of cytoplasmic streaming is the formation of pseudopodia or false feet in amoeba. So uh, we, we have observed right how amoeba engulfs foreign particles. That is because of the movement of their plasma membrane. I, I told you that I explained that in one of the previous slides. So that is also due to the movement of the cytoplasm. Let us suppose if, if this is the amoeba and this is the food particle. What happens since the cytoplasm is fluid, so it can change its shape such that the food particle comes here. This is the food particle. Here this is the food particle. And finally, it engulfs the food particle. It takes in the full part, food particle. So this is possible because the cytoplasm is capable of movement because of cytoplasmic stream. So, uh, this was all about cytoplasm. Now, we will talk about the different cell organelles. Now, so far, we have discussed about the three most important components of the cell. That is cell wall and cell membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. Now, we are go going to talk about all other cell organelles which are embedded in the cytoplasm. So, what are the cell organelles which we are going to study now? So, as I already defined, what is a cell organelle? It, it is each compartment inside the cell which performs a specific function. So now our target is to talk about each organelle separately and look at their structure, look at their function. So several cell organelles are, cyto, are suspended in the cytoplasm and each organelle is surrounded by its individual membrane and that is the speciality of eukaryotic cell that each membrane, each organelle will be surrounded by its own membrane. So here in this picture you can see that very clearly this is one organelle, this is another organelle, this is another organelle, this is another organelle and each of them has their own membrane. And the same is true for plant cell as well. This is one organelle, again this is one organelle and this is one organelle. So let us look at the cell organelles which we are going to talk about. Endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, mitochondria, plastids. So these are some of the important cell organelles which we are going to talk about in the next few slides. Now out of these endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and vacuoles, these four organelles together form the endomembrane system. 
Now, what is this endomembrane system? It has been observed that the function of these four cell organelles are closely related to each other. I mean, the, fun the function which endoplasmic reticulum performs depends on Golgi apparatus, which is again in turn related to lysosomes and vacuoles. So these four, their functions are coordinated. That is why they these four together form the endomembrane system. So first we will talk about these four cell organelles. Once we talk about their structure and function, you will yourself get to know how they are coordinated with each other's function. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.